What's up doll collectors, crafters, and miniature enthusiasts? One of our fabs and besties on Instagram wanted to know if we could make storage boxes. I'm sure we can do that. We just have to design it right quick. Bam! All right, we have a storage box. This is my first test run, and we came up with a U-Pack box. The safest way to pack, 100% guaranteed. No, not really. After a little revising, I came up with three printables that will be available on our blog, myfroggystuff.blogspot.com. The storage boxes come in four sizes. We have extra large, large, medium, and small. I printed these on white cardstock, however, you can also print them on white paper where we can glue it onto recycled paperboard and cut it out, just like we did for our Amazon-inspired boxes. And if you want to save printer ink and have brown cardstock, we made printables of just the outlines so we can print them on the colored paper. This is my preferred method because it saves us a few steps and some ink. Once it has been printed, all we need is a pair of scissors, glue, and tape. To make the box, we start by cutting it out, making sure to cut the little thin strips between the tabs. I'm using a card so I can make nice neat folds on the lines. I fold everything in first and then I fold it back. That way I can see the line so my edges come out a little neater. Once all of the lines have been creased and everything can fold in, we have a small tab on the side and we're just gonna glue that to close the box. I'm using a glue stick and I'm very generous with the glue because I want to make sure it holds. Now we're gonna line up those edges and then press and hold until they dry. Fold in the bottom tabs. Two of the tabs are plain and the other two have images on them. I want these to be facing out. Apply glue to the inside, then fold them over and hold in place. To make our storage boxes that we can fill with doll stuff and tape closed. The tape definitely adds a fun little detail, but if you want to remove it, it might rip the paper. So the other option is to just fold it in such a way that it closes, but you can still reopen it. So here we have all of our boxes. The ones printed on white cardstock are a slightly different color than the ones we printed on the brown cardstock. But I think both look great as storage boxes. Now that we have all of these boxes, we need a place to put them. Oh, oh, I know, I know! How about an attic? You never built one of those. Yes, I did! The Mystery Shack had an attic. Okay, okay. But what about a new one? Like one of those new hidden rooms you've been making? Okay, that we can do. I love these little hidden rooms because on one side, they look like extra wide magazine holders. But on the other, we have a hidden doll room that opens up for more area to play. To build my room, I am using foam board. However, you can always use cardboard instead of foam board. Scrapbook paper, clear plastic from packaging. I might want to remove the clothes first. Okay, now you can continue. And glue. My foam board measures 30 by 20 inches. I'm gonna cut seven inches off of the top. So now I have two pieces, one seven inch by 30 inch piece for the floor and extras, and a 13 by 30 inch piece for the walls. On the foam board for the walls, I'm gonna take one inch off the side. So now it's 13 by 29 inches. Let's keep this for later. On the back, measure over 11 inches from the sides. Score on the line, being careful not to cut all the way through so it can bend and snap. Repeat on the other side. So when we turn it around, we have a trifold with seven inches in the middle to fit the piece that we cut earlier. 
I'm gonna trim this piece to 11 inches, but hang on to the rest, we're gonna need it. Pick out a paper to use for the floor. I'm gonna use this light wood print and glue it down. Next, I would like to add a slanted wall on one side. So I take the leftover foam board, cut a 10 and 3 quarter inch piece, cut out a rectangle, clean up those edges with white paper if needed, cover with the wood grain paper, cutting out the center. I am going to use the leftover scrapbook paper on the bottom of the wall, making sure all the wood is going in the same direction. Decide on the angle of the roof, cut a triangle to those measurements, and glue it to the wall. Let's finish our window, turn it over to the back, tape clear plastic over the opening, flip it over, glue half inch foam board around the edges, glue a quarter inch piece across the center, glue it to the wall and the triangle, glue in the floor, and I only glued it in along this side and the back. Now I would like to add strips of foam board for more detail, but I have already used up my one piece of foam board. So I could cut strips of scrapbook paper and glue them directly onto the walls, or I can just borrow from my scrap bin, cut foam board into half inch strips, cover it with paper to make wooden beams. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do because I like how it's 3D. I added beams to the walls and a few to the ceiling. And since I already cut a second piece of foam board, I might as well make a floor extension using an 11 by 11 inch square of foam board. Glue scrapbook paper on top and our room just got a little larger. I'm gonna add some baseboards around the bottom of the walls. On the wall that bends, I glue a little piece of paper down first. I make my board a little short on this side, glue the foam board to the wall so there's a small gap at the bend, allowing it to still close. Completing our attic. This is a fun space that we can totally use for storage or a doll room. And when we shine a light through the window, we can make some interesting lighting for our doll photos. Now let's place a few of those storage boxes in the room to complete our miniature attic, giving our dolls a place to store their winter wardrobe. Thank you for joining us while we made miniature storage boxes and an attic that closes up for easy storage. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to ring the bell and follow us on Instagram at my froggy stuff and the frog vlog and we will see you next time bye